Hello, and welcome to the GSI Recipes website where you can create menus, recipes, production sheets, and print nutrition labels. All of this will be discussed in this video. The purpose of this website is to create a database of chef-tested recipes that incorporate the latest food trends. This database will allow chefs to create innovative menus and accompanying production sheets and corresponding POS nutrition labels. It will also help chefs identify recipes that meet our healthy go be full standards. 600 calories or less, 800 milligrams of sodium or less, 10 grams or less of sugar unless from fresh fruit, healthy oils, no trans fats, no artificial preservatives, fresh fruits and vegetables, whole grains, nothing deep fried, and no processed meats. It will also help identify allergen-free recipes plus vegan and vegetarian dishes. This will also help standardize products company-wide leading to better purchasing power and cost controls. Most importantly, it will allow guest services to be an industry leader in providing detailed health and wellness information to the customers we serve. There are two different types of users on the website. There are main chefs and local chefs. The key difference between the two is that main chefs are able to create recipes and local chefs are not. Both types of users are able to view recipes, print them, print the nutrition labels, create menus, view menus, download a client view menu, and download a production sheet. To obtain access, you just need to inform me by emailing your first name, last name, email address, and if you will be a main chef or local chef. My email address is cookk at guestservices.com. I will set you up in the system and send you an email with a user guide and information on creating your password. Review the attached user guide before getting started. It will contain all of the information I will be discussing in this video along with the recipe creation standards for main chefs. Click on the link in the Intellectsoft email. Make sure you are using the Chrome web browser. The system works best in Chrome. Create your password by following the instructions on the screen. And you can also bookmark the web page for easy access later. This isn't necessary, but I highly recommend doing this. You can go to these three dots up here, go to bookmarks, and bookmark this page. To log in to the website, just click log in here and you'll be greeted by the menu page, but we're gonna first go to the catalog page. From here, you can scroll to the bottom to click through many of the recipes. There's various pages here. You can filter the recipes by using the box on the upper left side of the page. Check a category box to bring up all the recipes for that category. So we can check, let's see, we could do beef entrees and it'll bring up all the beef entrees currently in the system. To uncheck any categories, hit clear all, or simply uncheck the box. To find a specific recipe, you can utilize the search box, which is located just above the filter box, right here, and you can type out what you're looking for and it will appear if that recipe exists in the system. So I'm just gonna type out meatloaf, and you can see it brought up many different meatloaf recipes. There are many options for sorting through recipes. The sort function is located to the right of the search box, right here. You click on it. You can sort A to Z, Z to A, calories low to high, calories high to low, date of creation, old to new, and date of creation, new, new to old. Each recipe on the catalog page shows information on the cuisine and the calories. If you click on a recipe, it will take you to the recipe view page. On the recipe view page, you are able to view, scale, edit, print the recipe, and print the nutrition label. To scale the recipe, type in the servings box the number you want to scale the recipe to. So say we're scaling this recipe to 40 servings, and you hit apply. Try to use a number that the current servings can multiply into evenly, like four into 24, for example. To reset the number of servings back to what it originally was, click Reset to Default. And now it'll go back to 20 in this change as well. To edit the recipe, click on the Edit button in the upper right-hand corner. We will go over this more when we discuss creating recipes. This functionality will not be available for local chefs. It's only for main chefs. To print the recipe, click on the Print button next to the Edit button. This will bring up the print preview window. From here, you will click on more settings. 
and change the scale to 70 to 100. So currently I have it scaled to 80, but let's see what 90 looks like. You can probably even go a little bit higher yep, to keep it on the one page. Change your margins to minimum, preferably, and you want to have the background graphics on. And then you'll just hit print. To print the nutrition label, click on the printer icon in the Total Nutrition Facts panel. This will bring up the print preview window. From here, you will click on more settings, just as before, and change the scale to 100. All nutrition labels need to be scaled to 100. Make sure headers and footers are unchecked and uncheck background graphics. Also, make sure you look on the recipe view page to see if the recipe was marked as healthy. So let's go back, and it is. It's marked as healthy here. If it is marked as healthy, you wanna make sure you print the nutrition label on green paper. This paper can be purchased through the marketing department. If it was not marked as healthy, then just print the nutrition label on plain white paper. We're now gonna go into the menu page, which you just click up here. As a main chef, you are able to view every menu added to the website. In the next phase of the system, we are going to be changing this so you only see the menus you've created. Local chefs only see the menus they've created and the menus that have been assigned to them. On the left side of the page, you'll see a list of menus. You can click between the different menus to view each one. In the middle of the page, you'll see the menu for the one that you've selected on the left. From here, you can click on the different days to see the menu for each day. Each recipe on the menu will show a picture, price, serving size, calories, and cuisine. You can also click on the recipes listed within the menu to open the recipe view page. On the right side of the page, you can click on the various weeks in the calendar. This will bring up different menus on the left side. By clicking on the arrows by the month, you can switch between the different months. You can go from July to August, September, and then you can click on the weeks within each month. Below the calendar, you might see the schedule of meal and who the menu is assigned to. You can see the menu is assigned to another local chef right now. Above the calendar are three buttons, download, edit, and delete. When you click the download button, you'll be able to download the client view menu, which can also be used internally if you'd like, and the production sheet. The production sheet will be downloaded as an Excel spreadsheet and the client view menu will be downloaded as a PDF document. Clicking edit will bring you to a screen that looks exactly like the create menu page, which we will discuss in a bit. Clicking the delete button will delete the menu. Above these three buttons is the create menu button. You will click this button when you want to create a new menu. So now we're gonna move on to creating a menu. So we'll click this button. You'll first start creating your menu by typing in the title of your menu. Typically, this is the name of your unit. So I'm just gonna type example menu. You'll then type the names of the stations you want on your menu into the station name text box. You'll add all of the stations for each day by clicking on the Monday through Sunday tabs below the title text box. So I'm going to type in wedge. And the easiest way to do this is highlighting it, control C to copy, and you can paste it by doing control V to the rest of the days. I'm going to do all the way through Friday. I'm going to go to Monday. And I'm going to do soup. And you'll control C again, control V to paste. And you can also copy and paste by highlighting it, right clicking, copy, and then paste. I recommend doing this. It's a lot faster than typing out each station for each day. If you need to add a station, you'll just click on the Add New Station button. And I'm going to add Olives. If you ever need to delete a station, you can just click on the trash can icon here, and it will delete it. Once all of your stations have been added for each day, start adding the recipes by clicking on the Add Recipe button below the station name text box. 
This will bring up a screen similar to the catalog page where you can search, filter, and sort through all of the recipes in the system. Click on the recipe you're looking for and it will be added to the menu. So I'm going to filter for all soups. Then I'm just going to add Stuya Spice and Chili. And then I'm going to continue adding recipes for the rest of the station. You'll then want to add the price for that recipe in the price text box. So I'm just going to make up some prices here. And I'm just going to copy and paste this price into the rest of the week. If you need to delete a recipe, click on the trash can icon to the right of the price text box. To add another recipe, click on the Add Recipe button. Once you've added all of the recipes, you can move to the right side of the page where the calendar is located. Click on the week you want the menu to run. Below the calendar, add the hours of operation by clicking on the Edit Schedule button. This will bring up a screen where you can add either the station name or the meal, breakfast, lunch, or dinner, by typing it into the station name text box. Click on the empty boxes below to select times you're open for that station or meal. If you need to add a station, click on the Add New section above the station name text box. If you need to delete a station, click on the trash can icon to the right of the station name text box. To save this information, click on the Edit button. Below the schedule a meal is the assign to section where you can assign your menu to local chefs. To do this, click on the add local chefs button. This will bring up a screen with a list of all of the local chefs. Check the boxes to the left of the local chefs names that you want to assign the menu to, then click on the assign button. If you need to delete any assigned local chefs, click on the trash can icon next to his or her name. Once you are done creating your menu, click on the Create New Menu button to save the menu. This will automatically take you to the menu page. If not, then the menu was not entered correctly. To create a copy of a menu, click on the Edit button on the menu page of the menu you want to copy, then scroll all the way to the bottom. Then click on the Create New Menu button to copy the menu. Once you click this button, the menu will automatically be copied. Make sure to change the title so it does not say copy of. Say this menu is a part of a cycle. You can change it to four weeks from now or whenever your cycle is. So I'm going to change it for the first full week in August. And then you can click Save. So now you can see there is a, the menu here and it will come back again in August. And that is everything you need to know related to the GSI Recipes website. If you have any questions, please contact me, the website's administrator, Caitlin Cook, at cookk at guestservices.com. Thank you.